the Middle Ages and still in the 1200s, there was a young boy, six years old, who was given by his parents to a Franciscan monastery by the name of William, William of Ockham. And William of Ockham turned out to be a very curious sort of theologian. He speculated on particularly the power of God. He was absorbed by the idea of the power of God and attempted to think through to the very limits, as it were, this power of God. So for example, he thinks through, could God bring a sinner who is really deep in mortal sin to heaven without changing that person inwardly? And he says, yes because God can produce any effect without needing the secondary causes and the preparation for the secondary causes. Another example. Could God command us to hate each other and to hate him, which then would be the law, and he concluded, yes, because God's will is the law. It establishes what is right and what is not right. So you could see there was a vastly exaggerated emphasis on the freely willed decisions of God's power, a reduction of what was very deep in the Christian tradition, that God is not only will but wisdom. God is goodness itself. It would be absurd to think God could command us to hate him. But this was the road pursued by Ockham. He had a sort of tragic end, he was accused of various heresies, went to the court of the Pope in Avignon to sort out these accusations, was involved in the poverty disputes of the Franciscan order, eventually fled from Avignon to Munich to join the Pope's enemies, lend them the power of his pen, and apparently was never reconciled. He himself didn't have a huge following, but one very important figure who identifies himself as one trained in the mind of William of Ockham he calls himself an alchemist, is Martin Luther. Um, he admired Ockham vastly early on, and when he broke with scholastic philosophy and theology, it was Ockham that he had in mind. Luther had very little knowledge of Bonaventure, um, of Thomas Aquinas, of Thomas Aquinas indirectly through Gabriel Beale. There's one disastrous effect. Luther attempted to escape from this kind of scholasticism and in a way return to the gospel of Christ, but retained one key premise, namely one could not make sense of the world, not even of God's action. It did not follow any intelligible wisdom, but was merely a matter of will and power. Now, as soon as you, it, it, it's quite logical 
that he thought of our world, of nature, as denuded, naked of all goodness. You can't find goodness in it. The only thing you can rely on is Christ as the Redeemer who, as it were, snatches you from this disaster of the corruption of our nature. Mm -hmm.